Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today, I want to talk to you guys about why Marathon Digital specifically, um, as well as the mining companies, are essentially trading at a deleveraged standpoint to Bitcoin. And this is right at the, the very worst point in terms of when you'd want to be doing this, okay? And I'm, I'm going to take it back to how I always take it in my recent videos in terms of the math behind it. And what I want you guys to understand that as if we zoom in here, as you come towards a point, an inflection point, right? As a negative, if you, this is your equilibrium line and you have a positive and a negative, as you get very far on the, the, the bar graph of time, as this equals is T, you, you have to understand what is making up that system, okay? And so what I told you guys is energy works in, in waves, right? Shorter term time frames, more specific macro events, um, they, they, you have to be more specific. So there's, there's different levels, different waves of energy, bigger waves and smaller waves that take more time to, to kind of happen. And wherever along the overall bar graph you are is where the components of the system are. Because in mathematics, nothing can ever equal one, or in zero, otherwise it, 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 those numbers don't exist, right? One is a constant, right, throughout time because one is exactly what is there, right? But when you try to make assumptions, make predictions, predict A, the future, and, and, and explain the past, we what we do is we approximate ones and we approximate zeros because nothing is ever one and zero, there is two components to a system as there is a positive and a negative charge through an equilibrium, okay? And so as we look into the components on the system, I wanna say that in a longer term time frame, on a weekly, on a monthly time frame, we are at a very large capitulation of a bottoming zone. And so when we look at the smaller energy time frames, how do you make up a very, very negatively charged zone? Well, you'd have to have the small energy coming down, the slightly bigger energy, oops, coming down, and the medium term energy coming down. And that is how you get yourself in a very, very negative correlated state, okay? Because what we are attempting to do in, in life, essentially, is recognize supply and demand efficiencies and deficiencies, right? We want to exchange something. We want to predict the future and anticipate the environment of the future so that we can not be forced into making supply and demand crunch decisions. We are ahead of the curve and we already have what we want. So we don't have to play a stupid price because we already have it. We own the good stuff and we don't own the bad stuff. Essentially, that's what that is. And everything in life plays a positive and a negative correlation. And it always wants to contract towards an equilibrium line. The, the point in which we determine what is right. And that is your constant. What does one equal? What is the balance? What is the equilibrium? When does it equal one? Okay. And so... What we are seeing here is on, let's say, the one minute, the five minute, the one hourly, right? The, the, the one day. And so you see these time frames in which people make decisions off of are in a negative correlated state. The, the stock looks very, very weak. The order flow is very, very negative, right? There's a lot of people trying to short in towards money, right? When I explain that you have higher levels of volatility relative to smaller levels of volatility, your magnets, your 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 horizontal lines that absorb this energy, right? They, they become more strong, right? They make more of an impact, right? Because if you have a lot of liquidity in the stock, right? Think of it as a low pressure system and a high pressure system. What creates wind? Well, there's high pressure over here and then low pressure over here. And then it's like a suction, it's a vacuum. It wants to flow in the general direction, right? You have to understand that. Now, you can get colluded with noise because you don't understand the specific time frame that you're looking at and you'll get different aspects because you aren't specifically, what you the information that you were interpreting isn't the information you need to interpret to correlate that to the time frame that you're looking at. It's like taking a piece of information that sure, it makes a lot of sense and it's useful, but 
we can't use it because it doesn't, it's not a big enough component in our system. We are assuming something, let's say, is the equivalent to one in our assumption of, oh, does this make sense? But realistically, it's like 0 0.7. And so it, it flaws our thesis. It makes our thesis flawed. And so what I'm seeing in Marathon Digital is a high amount of, of leverage off, right? You're starting to see Bitcoin creep up, but it isn't in its hyperbolic phase. And there's been a long amount of time where you've seen dilution, you've seen um, high interest rates, you've seen money contraction. And so the stock wants to mimic a contracting market, right? We understand this as competent thinking humans that we understand how volatility works, right? A higher volatile stock is going to give us a lot more gains and a, a lot more losses during stagnation. It's gonna underperform because we pay a premium for that leverage. And what I am saying, the thesis that I'm making to you is that me being one to two years or six to 12 months early is, is going to far outweigh the factor of the leverage that it gives us, the, uh, the volatility exchange in a supply and demand crunch. I s anticipate this supply and demand crunch because if you look at contrast interest rates, right? Pretend once again, this is your time graph, right? And like everything, there's an equilibrium curve, but this is the general direction of your interest rates, right? So you will have interest rates up here, interest rates down here, but it, it's compressing towards zero towards one, right? If you look at a very long term from the 1970s, 1980s, what happened is, okay guys, we needed to supplement interest rates really high. We have the initial reaction, right? And then it contracts off of this. This, this is when interest rates were 8, 18% back in the 1980s, but it should realistically contract to one. Why? Because we added entropy into the system right in a closed setting system so it, it has to dissipate somewhere the the energy needs to kind of go somewhere right and so what i'm saying here if we pull up the marathon digital chart and we we look at the these positive and negative correlations you see a very very strong uptrend of bitcoin on the five minute ever since open right we inversely don't see that same type of correlation. We see a gap in the market, but the price isn't following the leverage. What the price is following is these magnetic $16 marker lines and this downtrend line. And so the sellers, the, the liquidity that makes up the market is selling onto the buying pressure. What competent humans, thinking humans need to understand if you are going to be successful is where is the overall energy flow? Right? If, if you want to exist, if your goal is to exist, if your goal is to live, you need to understand on the big time frame, on the one daily time frame, if you were an options market seller on a one day, right, which is the best, is the highest premium of insurance, where is the one day leading you to go? What is the one day indicating to us? And where are we on this equilibrium line for the weeks to come? Are we positioned in a proper stock or do we have a uh, low reward, high risk scenario? And so when you look at just specifically on itself, um, Bitcoin and Marathon Digital, we can bring up Bitcoin here first. Bitcoin is in some very, very bullish setups, right? And so what, what indicators I like to just add here is a MACD, okay? And so, Oops, I think this, here I wanna, I just need to, it's, can't explain. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's add the indicator, MACD, BTC, USD, and then I'm gonna throw up some moving averages that we like here uh, to kind of just gauge. So important moving averages 10 10 moving average which is rep represents 10 day or 10 candlesticks if that's on the daily time frame the 20 and the 200 so a very long one and then the kind of medium term trend okay and that that's very important that dictate that's going to dictate a lot of things and we can we're going to change the line style here but we're just going to pull up some charts okay and so on the daily time frame you see like i said I, we have this soron's tower we have this uh, kind of order flow out, consolidation, contraction, expansion, right? But what we see is 
uh, sort of a triple bottom here, right? Three times it tried to get below 54,000. One time it did, rejected, but it, it's tested the lower bounds of the overall money flow three times, and that's largely due to Mount Gox, Silk Road, Germany, right? This was the summer selling the summer sell pressure but right now you just added new liquidity the the order flow of money is now back in instead of having a, a contractive five percent interest rates now you have 4.5 percent interest rates and the market the day before the day of and the day after all three are bullishly indicating that that is the directional flow of money and we see that the daily is also rewarding this you have a breakout of a downtrending daily and this is what we call a shift of the equilibrium line okay and so if you bring this out to the, to the weekly which is a, a more of a a broader standpoint where you can really get trades right the the trades why i've told you in the past that macd's work for some time frames and they don't work for other time frames because you have to ask the self the, yourself the question who is using it and who is dictating it right can it change is it variable right and so the weekly is a very, very good time frame to determine the, the directional flow of money. You can see it contracting, but the price didn't necessarily contract, right? Um, when this flips, which is, is in a soon uh, standpoint, you have the catalyst that brings order flow in. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna see these key breaking points where shorts get liquidated out of their position and new buyers like to say, okay, this is the point of no return the rate of change, I'm not spending a lot of time in this asset and I'm going to get a good rate of change uh, in terms of positive feedback loops to buy. And this is what inflicts the initial buying pressure and the later buying pressures are, are caused by this initial catalyst that is just a stronger move. It's a, it's a positive entropy environment. The, the disorder, the equilibrium line is going to shift to, to where the energy is, right? And so, this is what the MACD is. Another great indicator that we can then look up is how about Coinbase? Once again, see somewhat of a leverage standpoint of the MACD is crispy and then the MACD, but it's looking to curl. That's what you see on the daily uh, or on the weekly. On the daily, it is curling. And I love the Hekiyasaki for Coinbase because it shows nice ordinal flows of money. So you saw this first ordinal flow, but then you see a sharper, steeper drawback that we are breaking out of right now. And you can even bring this down if you don't wanna do the top wick, you can do the middle wick here and bring it over like that where it nicely tested the equilibrium line of the downtrend and it's breaking out, right? And it's above the five moving average, your other mo or your 10 moving average, your other moving averages could be there as well. Um, if we add them here, technical or style, 10, 20, these moving averages are crossing these moving averages are there which indicates the order flow of money okay and so the most leveraged uh is in the the highest capitulated state right it is the the sharpest you see the strongest downtrend as of recent because the leverage is is pulling off it's eating up right the the the, the fed just announced the 0.5 percent interest rate cuts you have the highest shorted stock on the market in a Bitcoin bull trend, right? This is what happens. This is how you reach these high explosive moves. How does this reaction even happen? Why doesn't it happen on every stock? Is because you get these super deleveraged and over leveraged states when you have a lot of energy flow all coming out, right? Medium term energy, short term energy, longer term energy, but it is underlyingly waved in to this longer term trend, this stronger order flow, right? And so what that does is it suppresses the price, but which creates a short term negative outlook, right? But it gives the energy, the power to make this big move up, right? It is the catalyst that it expands the reaction above what we want. So people who are giving this a sell rating, you see strong buys, you see uh, sells. Um, there's a lot of confusion in terms of what these miners are and everything like that. And so what I'm saying is I believe that there is a, a, a storm brewing, a low pressure system. A, a, there has been every 
big storm is a collaboration of a high pressure and a low pressure system in the stock market what is that low pressure is liquidity it is leverage is volatility but it gets kind of saturated by these magnets and option markets and manipulation through that sort right but whenever there's a high pressure system which is a store of value a, a investors long-term investors that eat up shares and saturate the supply and demand that creates the the, the chaos the havoc you have people looking to become long-term investors because they believe in the company and the company's been producing such good returns and there's the liquidity the volatility that that comes with that underlying stock and there is no bigger discrepancy in terms of high pressure and low pressure and, and volatility than marathon digital with this upcoming bitcoin bull run so i, I just want you guys to be prepared that i understand not very many people are, are going to watch this video in the now but when you watch this video in the future and you see why marathon digital is much higher and, and you ask yourself the questions and you want to understand this is what somebody is thinking in the current present time and it's going to allow us to make better predictions in the future uh when there's other plays because there's always a positive and negative energy correlation and we just have to find that and find when at what point in time that supply and demand crunch is going to hit that's our goal that's what we're doing and that's kind of why we're selling options because this is ridiculous right you have 4.3 4 percent up bitcoin's way up more than that and you have micro strategies which theoretically should be less leverage at uh, up 11.6 percent and that's why we own some micro strategies some mstx which is probably at 24 bucks by now 2330 up 19 percent you see good waves of volatility but it, this definitely looks like it's going to come in and, and and obliterate this 2589 marker um in the next couple of weeks right and you see volume increasing so um stay tuned guys for more videos but this is the why why is it capitulating why does it not make sense